Plovdiv. Once more, I return to the old town, driven by nostalgia along its thoughtful, quiet little streets. Or I may be here because of an illusion, that this time I will unveil the secret of its warm and gentle attraction, that I will, at last, decipher the mysterious message of thousands of years hiding in its shadows and silences, in the flight of the birds, in the ancient stones. I walk through the streets listening for the footsteps and voices of the people who used to live here. They tell of the first settlement, which grew up here more than 6,000 years ago, of the mysterious Thracian people, who have left us the oldest name for the town, Eumolpia, of the soldiers of Philip, the father of Alexander the Great, of the Romans and the Slavs, of the Proto-Bulgarians. I walk along the streets of the old town, trying to see it through the eyes of those artists who have become a part of it forever and who achieve the most typical of things Bulgarian in their distinctive art. Because, above all, Plovdiv is the town of the national revival, the period which has given us masterpieces of architecture which seem to combine the Bulgarian feeling for harmony with the intimacy and comfort of hearth and home. the first town of note in Bulgaria after the capital Sofia. Plovdiv, in the center of Bulgaria, and Bulgaria, in the center of the Balkans. A crossroads of history, a place where foul and fair winds meet, a place of favorable influences and of destructive invasions, of dedicated resistance against the foreign invaders, of dreaming painters of icons and of heroes and sad songs. People who have endured hardship are good people. Good people are hospitable, as are good towns. Plovdiv is one of the best towns I have known. Perhaps this town has survived through the ages, because not only in years of plenty, but in the lean years it has been an important crossroads for caravans from the east and west, a multilingual marketplace, a lively, welcoming center. And there, where people meet to exchange their bread and salt, there both one's own people and one's enemies respect the homes and shelters and keep the springs unmuddied, because tomorrow they will be needed again. There's hardly any other time of the year when so many languages from every corner of the earth can be heard. But no doubt everyone understands the language of fashion, and that is why it is given such prominence during the time of the fair.
Tradition is inseparable from ritual, while ritual is the memory and imagination of the nation. Cookery dancers, noisy and devilish, amusing masks. A fantastic child of Bulgarian village demonology, brought to us from some long-forgotten pagan time. They have surged up the main street to greet the guests, to drive out the evil spirits, to bring more children to each house, more fruit on the trees, for this year's fair also to be successful and rewarding. Cookery dancers, a happy greeting to the people of today which has come to us from shaman fires that died down long ago. You can see flower markets all over the world, but there is something rather unusual to Plovdiv. Because flowers are not sold in a town where every backyard is a flower garden. That is how it was once upon a time. Now the concrete waves of multi-storied housing estates have relentlessly surrounded the old town too, but it did not give in. It did not surrender and continues to resist. It resists with frail, vulnerable, but worthy weapons. With the flowers and box shrubs in its yards, with the old acacias in its silence, with the melancholic murmur of its marble drinking fountains. Will old Plovdiv survive? I think so. Because there is in its arsenal of resistance an undefeatable weapon, art. The houses from the epoch of the Bulgarian National Revival have become the foremost concert platforms for the greatest Bulgarian performers. The Bulgarian National Revival. This is the fire of national self-awareness that blazed up during the five centuries under the Ottoman yoke, of a feeling of belonging to one nation, which brought back a Bulgarian significance to the music and the weaving, a Bulgarian spirit to the homes, to the wood carvings, and to the people's dreams. Perhaps this is exactly why the young generations of talented musicians, poets and artists so often return to old Plovdiv as though they are returning to the old family home, so that they might draw close to its unraveled mysteries, to its wise silences before setting out on their travels to Europe and the world. And Plovdiv always sends them off on that long and difficult journey called art with its silent blessing. The Dimov Quartet, famous throughout the world as a Bulgarian quartet. Maybe tomorrow the four musicians will fly to meet their public in Paris and Rome, Moscow and London. But that is tomorrow. And today the famous violinist Mintu Mintuf is once again in this old house among his admirers from the Plovdiv Conservatoire, who will be the first to hear and appraise his latest performance.
And as I try to discover, perhaps somewhat frivolously, the truth about this town, which has already lived through so many centuries without being exhausted, without wasting its energy, so that it remains even to the present day amazingly vital, so I reach the most important of its dimensions, the human one. The citizens of Plovdiv, one of its wonders, which determines its inexplicable attractions, its unique vivacious atmosphere. This rapidly growing modern town with a socialist structure and almost half a million inhabitants, threatened as are all modern urbanized towns by alienation, contains people who have not allowed the marvelous treasures of the old settlement to disappear. Good neighborliness, familiarity, the daily human contact. This is why the traditional center of Plovdiv has not died, has not been drowned in the cold waters of the modern big city. A place for the performance of the rituals of people's daily lives, simply to pass be here by every day, simply to spot someone, to nod or smile at someone. The main street, the intersection for half a million coordinates of life, always alive, always excited, curious, unsophisticated and ready for many friendships. It must be in this that lies hidden the unwilting youth of Plovdiv, that 6,000-year-old good-hearted sage.
вся души и от всего помышления наше горце. Господи Вседержителю, Боже Отец наших, молимся, услыши и помилуй. Помилуй нас, Боже, по великой милости Твоей. Молимся, услыши и помилуй. The monasteries of Plovdiv, the churches, icons, murals, carved altars, a spiritual flight and a proud reminder of the centuries of slavery when the Bulgarian church lowered its eyes from the heavens to stare at the tragic fate of the people and to keep alive under the ashes the spirit of national awareness. And that voice, Boris Christov, the mighty bass of La Scala, Milan, the Metropolitan and Grand Opera, who has never lost his ties with the pure sources of the beginning. Создателях святого храма сего и о всех прежде почивших от всех и братьях Dimitar Kirov. Dimitar Kirov one of the many artists because of whom the town, awarded many names over the years, received the most deserved of its titles. Plovdiv, the town of art. Icons destroyed by fire, a series of paintings by the artist, thoughtful and disturbing art, or perhaps a confessional message to his contemporaries to save from ruin, from the devastation of cosmopolitan nihilism, from electronic indifference, the beauty created in the course of centuries. Is this not indeed the example which Plovdiv itself has given to many other towns? The master, the man with a mysterious devilish smile in the corner of his eye, who saw his Plovdiv as no one else did, and who brought a whole generation of Plovdiv artists to the great mystery of beauty and harmony in the most national, most Bulgarian sense of these words. Plovdiv has paid its respects to him. Today, yet another of the old houses has become a permanent home for his art. A descendant of a notable school of painting, 
and himself an icon painter whose saints and Madonnas are villagers and shepherds. Among the many art galleries in this town, there is one which is not mentioned in any of the catalogues. It is enriched with new works each time the artists of Plovdiv leave their studios to use the unbound spaces of the town. Art, generously supported by the town's authorities, has become one of the important urban aspects of Plovdiv. It is reflected in the outlines of the streets, in the interiors of buildings, and has become one of the trustworthy defenses against architectural impersonality. And this is the largest artist studio used by the town's children, its future artists. Of course, that is if the ubiquitous cars stay clear of these so far unclaimed asphalt areas. one of the oldest towns in Europe, the first fortress built thousands of years before the Trojan War, the first cult object of the New Stone Age discovered here, dating from 20 centuries ago, Philip of Macedon was proud to give the town he conquered his own name. Philippopolis, and 4,000 years before that, there was a human settlement here, huddling among the six granite hills, as in a nest. Why has time, which erased from the map once prospering towns, powerful states and proud civilizations, turning them into dust, ashes and memories, shown mercy to Plovdiv? I cannot answer. The town still has not revealed all its secrets. To restore to a town its glorious past, to restore to a past age its greatness, is also one of the services rendered by the archaeologists, architects, restorers and artists. With careful hands, they searched the depths of the town as though searching through an old family chest to find at the bottom a long-forgotten ornament, a photograph of grandmother or a bundle of old letters. There is hardly a building in this town which does not lie over the remains of another. 
there can hardly be a street under which there does not lie another more ancient road. And one more touch. Centuries and epochs before Hellenism left here its marble signature, the civilization of the Thracians was born and flourished in these lands. This gold reminder of Thracian times, these nine vessels have returned to Plovdiv after a triumphant journey to London and Tokyo, Moscow and Vienna, New York and Geneva, where the admiration of the world enhanced their glittering beauty. A unique masterpiece, the most valuable memorial to the art of that epoch, found in Thrace, whose worth is far more than six kilograms of solid gold of which it was made. And in this place, the reconstruction of Plovdiv was halted, a new building development frozen, and the traffic diverted. A concrete shelter was erected. And all of this to save some birds who had flown here from thousands of years ago. The latest archaeological find. Tomorrow, the experts will summarize their observations. They will prepare detailed sketches, take photographs, fill new pages with research work. While today, people somewhat bewildered but charmed are staring at the mysterious figure of the woman who is looking at us though she wants to confide something which nobody else knows. This amphitheater, long forgotten and then resurrected, dug out of the ruins after 1,800 years of silence. And in the eternal flow of the ages, 13 Bulgarian centuries, 1,300 years. On these Byzantine lands, trodden down by hooves, the Slavonic Bulgarian state was born and flourished, a new civilization. It absorbed the ancient cultural layers and became the cradle of a new conception of the world, a new culture which made its contribution to the spiritual treasure house of Europe. It is the 24th of May. This day is Bulgaria's most celebrated holiday, the most joyful and nationwide. It is the feast day of Cyril and Methodius, the founders of Slavic Bulgarian literature, of the letters, of education and culture. It is the day of school children from towns and villages, of teachers, of students, of professors, of artists. There is no other holiday in Bulgaria which pulsates so sincerely, so deeply in the hearts of the people. This is the triumph of knowledge and books over darkness and ignorance. The day of the brothers Cyril and Methodius, who enlightened these lands with their knowledge 11 centuries ago, lit a flame spontaneously in the hearts and minds of all the people. Plovdiv was the first town to celebrate this day, and from then on, it became nationwide for always. Even in the old pre-war Bulgaria, which was undoubtedly one of the poorest countries in Europe, even in that Bulgaria, 
the father would sell the oxen and his little plot of land to be able to send his son away to study. And the sons of the plowmen became teachers, doctors and poets, titles won through many hardships. And Plovdiv deserves its present too. From the once upon a time town of tobacco workers, of chronic unemployment and acute social unrest, today it is a leading university town. I believe in the good and humanity of a people whose most sacred holiday is the day of the alphabet. I believe in a people who for centuries has raised education to a religion, the school to a temple of this religion with only one icon, the blackboard, with only one saint, the teacher. And I try to conceal my pride.
How many towns have thoughtlessly hurried to remove the traces of what was vaguely termed provinciality? An effort which in itself was provincialism, which caused lamentable damage to the town's interior. And how good it is that Plovdiv, venerable and ancient, a town with no inferiority complex, has built into its new atmosphere the old customs. I was not born in Plovdiv, but whenever I return here, I return to my childhood, with the inevitable brass band playing operetta overtures, with the people strolling by the fountain, with little pavement cafes, and with the children ever pestering for ice cream. And yet, the most notable aspect of Plovdiv remains its art. A visit from the National Theatre from Sofia, a festival of puppet theatres or of Bulgarian documentary films, a world television drama or chamber music, a concert of ballet in the courtyard of a house in the old town like this one, or a recital of a young poet, a Mexican artist showing his graphics, or the Leningrad Philharmonic Orchestra on a visit, or as in this house.
And like every new day, Plovdiv starts the morning with a familiar rhythm. The world of Aristophanes from last night will be put away in chests to free the stage for Shakespeare or Brecht, for one of Verdi's operas or Tchaikovsky's ballets. Last night's audience has long been at work. Yet another day has begun. Joan of Arc, one of Honegger's oratorios. We are the first to listen to it. During a rehearsal of the Plot de Philharmonia under the baton of Dobrin Petkov, one of the greatest Bulgarian conductors. Only a few days later, at the International Sofia Music Weeks Festival in the capital of Bulgaria, the performance of the orchestra from Plovdiv was to be described as the most notable musical event of the year. the eternal city on the plain of Thrace, huddling among granite hills as though in a warm nest. I always come back to this town, drawn by its shy gentleness and warmth, by its quiet old streets and its inexhaustible vitality. Drawn by a boy who, come what may, will endeavor to keep his balance and to attain the goal which he had set himself. <laughs> 